the city of Kuruleni. We're joining them today, of course, uh, to find out more about uh, some of the programs that they're involved in, mainly around service delivery. Sia Kuba uh, is uh, the conversation that we'll be getting into in a short while. Just enjoyed music there from Dr. Muruti, giving us a song, live songs, uh, live music and sound. Uh, that's what uh, he's just uh, performed for us. Now, getting into the business of the day uh, today here on Sunrise, we're joined by the executive mayor of the city of Ekuruleni, uh, that's Councillor Mzondile Masina. Good morning to you, sir, and thanks for joining us uh, this morning. Thank you, thank you for having us. Uh, good morning, Penny. Uh, so we, we're here today on a World AIDS Day to find out more about uh, the Siak Kuba program, which is a program that you introduced 100 days or so into your, um, 100 days into, into office, uh, and it's been going on for the past uh, 12 months. Uh, just to share with us, what was the, the objective behind this program? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. I think uh, when the new administration uh, came to office uh, 15 months ago, uh, we realized that uh, the city was lacking behind with practical programs to implement uh, in relation to service uh, delivery. There were a lot of backlogs, issues that could easily be resolved on the platform. So we sat together with a team and uh, conceptualized this program uh, to say that uh, we are not going to rearrange government, but what we are going to do is to consolidate effort and take everyone who is responsible for service delivery because people are there but they're not doing the work. Mm. Instead, we're receiving reports that all is well when we actually know that all is not well. So, so we then said that uh, the politicians, the HODs and service providers must at every Friday come together, go to different wards uh, to inspect uh, issues of service delivery so that that which is on the report uh, is the same thing that is on the ground. So we, what we found in our first 100 days was that it was, a, it was completely different. So we then decided that we are going to institutionalize this program so that uh, for the rest of the term, every Friday, uh, whether the mayor is there or not there, the team under the program is able to reach out to communities. Mm. We have solved not less than 1,000 uh, problems uh, that uh, just required uh, proactiveness uh, on our side as, as government. So, and the response from the community is such that people are happy uh, because we are always visible, but we are able to solve simple things like if there is a pothole or rubbish that is not picked up, uh, uh, the, the road that is not properly marked, and the grass that is not cut, we are able to do those things on the spot. So this program has really become a, a, a priority program for us uh, as this administration because mm. it's making us to reach out to... Uh, to our communities, and, uh, and there is a greater appreciation from, from the side of the community. So has it cut a lot, obviously, of, of, of red tape? And also, does it speak to your prop, uh, prop agenda, which you uh, set out when you, you came into office? And just take us through what, what, are, what does that mean? Well, uh, we, 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 when we are campaigning for 2016 local government elections, there were some of the priorities uh, that uh, we had to spell out in our localized manifesto amongst them was to ensure that uh, we deal with the backlogs in housing. Uh, we now took a decision and, 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 and made budget available for building 100,000 uh, houses as we speak. Uh, we have three programs that are running, which are going to give us a yield of not less than 50,000 houses that are going to be built. And the target is to do the other three mega projects together, working with the uh, MEC Mashatile and the Minister Sisulu to make sure that all those programs are able to give us the houses that we need. But secondly, we, we talked about the issue of having service sites because other people, they just need the piece of land that is serviced, they can build their own house. So we said that we need about uh, 59,000 of those and we've made uh, progress. Yesterday in council, I did give a feedback that this year alone, um, we, we are making quite a good progress in relation to that. And the third uh, priority area for Propua was to electrify the informal settlement. Mm. Because we have come to accept that we are not going to eradicate informal settlements. So what we must do is to make sure that the condition is livable. So the issue of sanitation, like in the past before we came in, a, a one a, a toilet was used by 10 families, which is indignant. Mm. So we then took a decision that will reduce that to five and possibly to three. And we're spending a lot of money uh, of government to, to try and bring about dignity. But more importantly, the issue of electrifying the informal settlement. If you go around the city of Eguruleni, a number of informal settlements are now enjoying electricity. And uh, what is uh, even more interesting to us as the city is that we thought that we were extending 
uh, the social security package uh, to, to our citizens, but uh, to the contrary, the citizens who are receiving those services are actually paying for them. The payment rate as we speak is at 98% from the informal settlements because everyone is taking responsibility and that helps us to reduce uh, easy new York, uh, like the illegal connection and mm. also other behaviors because people know that if you connect, you'll destabilize this, uh, the security of supply, so therefore, uh, they become our own uh, watchdogs in communities and, and we're quite happy uh, with the work that we're doing. But also there were a number of other issues that we looked at. For instance, um, uh, if you want to end poverty, uh, the cycle of poverty in the community, you, 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 you've got to break something. So we took a decision that uh, we'll focus our initiatives in educating a black child mm. uh, in Egurulene. So we invested about 100 million per annum. In, into ensuring that all the matriculants are going to institutions of higher learning. In our first intake, January this year, we took about 731 children who are in universities who are paying everything mm. until they complete. And, and now we are busy with the second intake that is going January next year. We hope the number will even be greater. We are quite, quite excited by those initiatives because for us, if uh, all those children are coming through the system, graduate, I think we were confident that they should be able to break the, 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 the poverty cycle in communities. So in terms of like availing the, those services and, and as you mentioned, uh, the access that the students have and uh, uh, the social programs in, in the different communities that they're getting, but how are you dealing with making sure that communities take responsibility, they don't have a sense of, of entitlement and, and really totally de depending on, on the city to, to look after them? Well, uh, that's one of the major areas uh, of focus that we, we are saying that to the administration. We must also focus our energies in educating communities. For instance, let, if I can give you one practical example, the issue of waste and, and what you see in, it mainly is just a behavioral issue. Mm. So it's one thing to go and pick up the waste, it's another to educate people what we need to do to package this way, this way so that those that are working uh, to pick up the waste don't have difficulties, but also it doesn't become a social hazard mm. uh, to communities. So, so the issue of educating communities has become central to the work that we do, and we're quite happy with the proactive administration that is there. Either getting out to communities to raise some of the issues that are of concern to us as a as government, and we think that working together with communities, we should be able to make a stride in the areas where where there is a, a, a point of disagreement. Now, issue of. Um job creation, especially looking at the numbers uh, the, of uh, youth unemployment you know, in our country. The, there was, there's always been a conversation about the aerotropolis uh, that uh, the city has been working on. How far is that? There was a talk of a, of a master plan uh, of that in terms of like creating opportunities for big industry and uh, to, to get these young people who are coming out of these universities to have access to, to actual jobs. Well, uh, when we came into the office, we conceptualized a 10-point plan to revive our economy because uh, the city of Figurulini, uh, city of Figurulini's economy was anchored by mining and manufacturing. Both sectors uh, are in sharp decline, so we needed to do something to revitalize, in particular, the, the manufacturing sector. You know that uh, the city and, and, and the area at large, we have built so many capabilities, so it's not something that we can simply negate. So. So we, we started uh, with a 10-point plan amongst those was to ensure that the Eretropolis master plan is approved. Uh, so we are going to be uh, accelerating our focus on the freight and logistics because of our advantage of the airport. But also, as a manufacturing city, it's important that uh, we, we, we build such capabilities uh, to deliver services. Uh, I, I must just say that uh, the first um, 12 months in office uh, saw the relationship between government and business uh, creating about 98,000 new jobs which are not there. So that uh, solution has created a new problem because we now have a, an increased number of job seekers as a result of our ability to, uh, to do the things that the private sector want and also the private sector to assist us to, to, to create jobs. So, so the, 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 if the net effect is that the unemployment is still relatively very high, uh, which is an issue that we need to be working at. So we have a, a panel of experts and advisors on how we must deal with such complex new challenge uh, that is arising. And, and, and we will be monitoring uh, through quarterly labor surveys that is done by uh, States SA, because we also don't want to give you figures that we can never tell you where we, where we got them. So, so we believe that uh, working together with, gov with, uh, with the private sector, we should be able to create some of those opportunities. So the strategy on the Eretropolis basically will then 
uh, contribute in greater detail. That is why, for instance, uh, about as we speak now, 20 of our learners are in Breda in the Netherlands studying freight and logistics because we also want to make sure that we contribute uh, people who are skilled because uh, for the longest time when we talk about youth unemployment, we used to almost uh, um, uh, undermine uh, those that are not to say mm. no, people are unskilled, people are this, people are that without bringing solution on the table. I think that the attitude has changed because where, where, when you say that um, um, where young people are educated, we should be able to give you a pool of young people. And we're looking into that graph and the percentage is steadily picking up in terms of the education level, especially those with the first junior degree and okay. so on.